Hello everyone, back to tuning into the Spring 2023 Evaluation from Gals WeatherVid. So here we go, we're going to evaluate our Spring Forecast. We released the Gals WeatherVid Spring 2023 Forecast on I think the 26th of February. We did a halfway review in the middle of April as well. We are now well past Meteorological Spring. Um, Meteorological Spring ended on the last day of May. It's now the 14th of June. So uh, it is time to go back in time and uh, see how we did with our Spring forecast we are one of the few channels that you know does go back do go back and evaluate their uh, long-range forecast i think it's important you know as long-range forecasters that we uh do go back and see how the forecast went after after the event you know see how we perform and whatnot and uh, we have always done that again as well if it's as long as i'm doing the uh, long-range forecast we will continue to do so so uh, as i say we're going to get on with that for you in a second just to say that the first video today was our 6 a.m uk weather forecast we've also released the 6 usa forecast and if all of that was not going to be live at 6 we, we will live stream our 10 to 14 day so that would normally on most days be a video uploaded on Wednesday we actually do the 10 to 14 day live and so I shall see you at 6pm hopefully um, for that. Thank you so to Richard by the way for our spring forecast gift it was beautiful it was lovely 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 thank you so much Rich for the spring forecast gift wasn't it a classic Right, okay, let's have a look then. So we're going to go to the Climate Averages page at the UK Met. Here we go then. So just to say, when we released the spring forecast, we was assuming that we would be using the 81 to 2010 average. Um, actually, in the interim, from like the end of February to now, the UK Met have removed <laughs> the 81 to 2010 average. So we now either have 61 to 90, 90 or 91 to 2020. Obviously, we're not going to use 61 to 1990 because that was a very different climate back in when things were much colder. So the relevant average that we're going to be using for this spring forecast and evaluation, although we didn't know it at the time, but the relevant average for this spring forecast is 91 to 2020. And of course, any forecast released from now onwards at Gow's Weather through the rest of this decade will be uh, using the 91 to 2020 climate average as well. So just to say about the spring forecast, what we uh, went for, by the way, so I better do that as well. Hang on, there's a lot to do with these evaluations. That's the only thing with them. Um, I get ahead of myself there. So the spring forecast was for, like, uh, average temperatures, a spring of two halves. We thought the first half would be delayed and a little bit difficult. The second half should be much better. That's the headline. Um, so if you can't show back to February, we had a sudden stratospheric warming event that caused a displacement of the polar vortex in February. Um, and and we said that will cause a delayed spring. And so we was expect like a cooler, a wetter first half to the spring. We said the reward, the payoff of that would be warmer and dry out later, specifically focusing on May um, for that. Uh, so we also said precipitation wise that there was likely to be about average rainfall. Again, probably wetter earlier on, drier. Uh, later on, we did tweak that a little bit more towards the wet side of things, though, when we came to do our uh, mid season review. So, most of the spring forecast, you know, we, we said we don't need to do uh, any changes with it, but we did in the middle of the season, middle of April, we did um, tweak the forecast a little bit more towards the wetter side. But broadly, we kept things pretty much the same at the mid-season review, and it was all going to hinge on whether we got that warmer and drier May. Right, so now we can go to the client averages page at UK Met. Here we go, then. You've already seen it, but let's do it again. So this is how the temperature, mean temperature, normally comes out for spring 2023 compared against 91 2020. You see, most places had an average temperature uh, this spring. So we did have a few little warmer areas, um, particularly north and Ireland had a slightly mild average spring, the far west, southwest of Wales and southwest England, and a little bit from northern England as well. But most areas are actually in those uh, white uh, colours, which means that the temperature only against 91 trend change was within half a degree of the long-term average. So from a temperature perspective, the forecast went very well. We're going to break that down month by month, though, in a moment. So our precipitation is concerned. That was a little bit trickier. So what actually happened is that northern uh, parts of the country had a drier than average spring, much as Scotland, especially northern west of Scotland, comes out drier than average, and it gets progressively wetter the further south and east you go, particularly in this southeast corner, like 
East Anglia, South East England into the Midlands, Central Southern England. We see significantly wetter conditions there. I would assume, I, we, I said we're going to break this down month by month and I assume what happened there is that the northern blocking that we had in the earlier part of the season that caused that colder, wetter spell during March. I would assume that sent the jet stream uh, a long way south. And so that is why southern parts of the country had uh, a wet season. We didn't really pick up on that. You know, topsy turvy, turn it on its head type thing. Because normally, Northern West Scotland will be wetter, South East England will be drier, of course. So that's precipitation once over the forecast that perhaps wasn't 100%. But as far as the temperatures were concerned, I don't think we did too bad. Let's break this down month by month. So this is how the mean temperature looks in uh, March. So you see that March was about average temperature wise, cold and average though for Scotland. Uh, otherwise, most areas come out about average temperature-wise in March. In April, again, most areas uh, for the mean temperature are normally about average, a little bit cooler in the southeastern corner. West Scott, Northern Ireland, a little bit milder. Again, most places within half a degree of the average. For May, we see much more of the country going above average with their temperature doubling in May. So that idea that we would have a bit of a delayed spring, um, it would be cooler earlier on, get warmer later, I think we see that playing out there within the averages. Of course, what we did say is that whilst the spring was likely to be delayed, it shouldn't be very cold. You know, we we were, we was expecting we would get um, some frost and snow through the early part of the spring. That indeed did occur. We did get that cold weather in uh, the first half of March, for example. But it, it wasn't brutal cold. So we said, yes, it would be, um, you know, we would go through quite a cool period, probably quite a cold month, could last about four weeks. We was thinking like mid-March to mid-April, but, you know, that was flexible. It's flexible on that. But the, the broad idea was that the early part of spring would be quite cool, sometimes cold, but wouldn't be like a, uh, March 2013, wouldn't be like blizzards and, you know, deep snow cover and, and frozen Britain. And the reason for that is that we had a different SSW, you, you know, it all hinged on the sun stratosphere warming because we had a displacement event rather than a split of the polar vortex. We said that the effect of that SSW shouldn't be as cold. Um, and I think we see that playing out very nicely there. So from a temperature side and an overall pattern side, I am very pleased with how uh, with how, you know, the spring forecast went. Now, as far as precipitation is concerned uh, for the spring, it works out like this. So we know we had a very, very wet March, especially for England and Wales. And you do see that idea, don't you, that for, like, northwest West it's drier, closer to the northern blocking. You think that the northern blocking is going to be up here somewhere. The high pressure is going to be uh, up there. And that's what's sending the jet stream down there, or probably even further south than that, actually. Um, so that's the reason northwest has gotten a little bit drier. Very wet across England, Wales. was the wettest March since 1981. April came out like that. Nowhere near as wet, but still above average rainfall for some southern east areas drier further north, and then May comes out like that. You see, May goes much drier then across many, many parts of the country, a much drier month. Probably this wet area for East Anglia will be hit this month, so I'm not sure. But it did take a while, if you remember, to settle, it, to settle things down in May. Um, we eventually got there, but it was a little bit later than I was anticipating. It happened like in after the first 10 days. So I was a little bit worried at one point about the spring forecast and our ideas for May. Um, but eventually we got there and we, we got much warmer and drier weather. Um, in May. I'll show you the um, the uh, sunshine as well. We can do that for the spring. Uh, that's why it's interesting to have a look at. We didn't give a prediction for sunshine in the spring forecast, but it's always interesting to see how that worked out. So you see, it was quite a dull spring in many southern and eastern regions, and actually a sunnier spring further north and west. So those in northern west and Scotland did really quite well, actually, although it was cold in March, but did really quite well uh, in this spring. And elsewhere, the spring was, was a little bit troublesome. Um, until we got to May, and that is when we got the payoff, as, as we said uh, we would. So, overall, I am very pleased to have a spring forecast worked out. I should go back again. Overall, I'm very pleased to have a spring forecast worked out. I think we're pretty much there or thereabouts. I think, you know, 
out of 10, I would probably give it a, a 7 or an 8. Let me know in the comments what you think. But uh, I reckon we had, we would say the spring 2023 forecast was, was, was a decent effort. And it follows on from um, a pretty successful forecast with the winter 22-23 forecast as well. I was quite pleased with how that one came out too. Of course, you're not going to get every 100%. You never do. We do long-range forecasts. You're just trying to get the trends as close as possible. I think for this spring forecast, we did well. So, yeah, I'm going to give myself a thumbs up, I think. Um, and I'm much less sure about the summer forecast that I released at the end of May. And I suspect I'll be seeing here you know, sometime in early September, um, and uh, it will be a very, very, very different evaluation, that one, because I am not at all sure about, about you know, what we forecast for the summer of 2023. And you are only as good as your last forecast, so uh, at some point I'm going to get a stinker, and it will probably be... Um, it will probably be the summer forecast, but for spring, I'm very happy with it. As I say, let me know in the comments what you think, and, uh, you know... Uh, I hope I hope you you uh, agree with the assessment. Um, right, so that closes the door on spring 2023. We have moved on now, of course. We release our summer forecast, as I say, at the end of May. We're now into autumn updates. We've got the winter 2023-24 NEO forecast being premiered on Sunday as well at 7 p.m. So we never stop. You know, the long-range bandwagon, the, the long-range bandwagon just keeps rolling on. And uh, and so, yeah, we are now well and truly on into autumn updates and beginning to start thinking slightly about uh, becoming winter as well. So, uh, yeah, more evaluations to come, of course, on our long-range forecast. But for the spring 2023 forecast evaluation, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much to Richard for the gift. And I shall see you a little bit later on, maybe, for our live stream. For this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.